how's it going everybody this is beat the bush this is the andy man 50 amp wired ev charger today i'm going to talk about which features you should look for in ev chargers first one is certification i think this is very important to make sure your device is not going to blow up your car this one in particular is etl and fcc approved so what they do is send these devices into those certification labs they pay thousands of dollars and they do a lot of different tests to make sure everything is okay. If you're gonna place it outdoors, you want to make sure that it's waterproof and it has an IP rating. Often not shown is the wire thickness inside your charge cable. Now that I have this in hand, this one says two eight gauge wire, one 10 gauge wire, and one 18 gauge wire. The main power ones are the eight gauge. The ground is the 10 gauge. It's not that the thicker, the better, because once you get too thick, it's actually really hard to handle the wire. If the gauge is too thin, there'll be too much voltage drop and actually it won't pass certification anyway so you want it a little bit thicker so that you don't have much power loss because you will transfer a lot of power to your car through this charge cable another thing to think about is the length of your charge cable sometimes you might think oh i want the longest one possible so you can have the most option you can charge your car in your garage or you can reach over another car one whole space after and still charge a different car as well but having a longer cable is not always better because all that electricity needs to travel through this thing there's going to be resistance and there's going to be power loss in the cable so over a lifetime of usage of this thing you probably want as long a cable as you absolutely need for example i park my car in the same exact spot every day i probably only need a six foot cable to reach from the charger to my car so i really wish they have different length cable options and this amount of cable is actually not cheap just by the weight alone i'd say this is probably valued at 50 dollars to 100 dollars. so if you could choose a shorter cable pay less for it that would be ideal. By the way, this particular Andy Man cable is 25 feet. Also, you might wanna think about standby power. Most EV charger is not gonna tell you what the standby power is. Every single watt of standby power, you're gonna use about 8.6 kilowatts per year at around 33 cents per kilowatt hour in California. This is around two, three dollars. It's not that much, but it actually adds up if you have a lot of devices, each consuming one watt or more. Sometimes if you go on vacation, you might actually wanna turn it off when you turn it back on. What is the procedure to get it to charge your car? Is it very cumbersome? Do you have to go into app, press a whole bunch of buttons to tell it, okay, you know, everything is fine, connect it back to Wi-Fi. So ideally, you want to be able to flip the switch, have this turn on, plug it in without pressing anything in the app and have it start charging. If you're gonna mount this outside or even inside, you want to have good theft prevention and having some kind of security screw is ideal. For this one, there's no theft prevention really. You can just push a screwdriver in here, push that pin and it comes right off. So it's best used indoors. Does it have an app? Because sometimes you want to schedule charging and not having to go all the way to the garage is super convenient. Many of these chargers now have RFID and it comes with two RFID cards. If you are the only one using it, and is indoors you don't have to have access control but this is something nice to have gives you more options this particular charger has a j1772 connector it fits most north american ev cars but if you're going to connect it to a tesla these are relatively inexpensive and you just buy a j1772 to tesla connector plug it right in and you can charge your tesla lastly you might want to think about the industrial design the color of the thing. Do you like the color? There are a lot more obnoxious designs. Sometimes they're like triangular, octagonal. Sometimes they're kind of like little swoopy. Many of these EV chargers actually doesn't have a screen. It's just completely blank and you access everything on the app. So this is kind of nice, but I'm worried about the standby power it consumes. Let's open this up and see the internals. This is the AC input access panel. Lime one, two, three, neutral and earth ground. So it doesn't use a neutral. 
there's a lot of empty space. Because this is a wired device, they can afford to not make it as compact as possible. The power is incoming over here and it's outgoing over here. There's a wireless module here. Empty space for a battery. There's relays for both line one and line two. In the front cover, you got the display and all the intelligence over here. This looks like NFC. 17 LEDs right here. There's a very heavy duty reset switch. Grommet for the screw for waterproofing. A rubber seal. The mounting hook for your cable will sit like this. And you got these pretty mean looking mounting screws. For the back plate, this goes up and it gives these really long mounting posts and screws. I'm starting to develop a lot of holes over here from different installations of EV chargers. It came with its own screws, but I'm gonna use one of the holes from the previous installation. Marking the rest of them. The anchor is actually a little bit long. You actually want it to expand right within the drywall. So it should have been maybe an inch or two long. If I put these in, it's just not gonna hold it very well because it's gonna expand towards the end over here. So I'm gonna have to use my own screws. This is the locking mechanism, which is slide it right on. And if you wanna release it, push on that lever. <clears throat> comes back off, you can push it like that. Cable holder, three screws. I'm reusing this screw hole right here just to minimize the holes. Mark it here, mark it there. These three anchors look more reasonable that it would fit in this drywall. Turn off the breaker. This is wired up to my main panel through a 70 amp breaker. Just the box and there's 240 volts coming out. I have this type of post that doesn't fit in there. I need a ferrule instead. And we can do that with this crimp kit. I just did it for L1. Let me do it for L2. Strip it. Make sure you get all the wires in there. Crimp it. Here's a 10 gauge one. That's why it's yellow. Crimp that one. It's like wrestling with a snake or a boa constrictor. I had to remove the heat shrink here because it's a little bit too big. Still wrestling with it. You gotta make sure all of these are well tightened. When it's not tightened, there's extra resistance. And when there's extra resistance, it builds up heat. If there's too much heat, it will melt it. I'm gonna tighten the wire clamp, cover back on, put the little jumper thing that connects it. And we're ready to turn it on. Remember to not remove any of the plastic until you're finished installing. That'll keep a lot of the dirt and scratches off of your brand new cable. So let me dress this properly. Turn it on. Welcome to use AC charging equipment, swipe card or app to start charging. Remember there was a button right here. That's an emergency stop button. It's gonna halt charging and now it's gonna be red right here and it gives a red circle indicator. Let me turn that off and it goes back to normal. Here's one of the cards, let's swipe it over here. Wait for the truck to be red. Connection status, 52 seconds. I'm gonna connect the Tesla connector to it. I have scheduled charging, so I have to manually start charging. It's starting to charge at five amps. Let me turn it up to as high as it'll let me, which is 48 amps. And let's see if it ramps up to 48 amps. My Tesla app is showing 48 amps charging at 237 volts. The charge voltage shown here is 240 point four volts, 47.8 amps. So it's in line with what the Tesla app says, 11.55 kilowatt charging rate, and it has charged 0.17 kilowatt hours. Pull the trigger if you wanna stop charging. And I'm gonna push the button, but not remove the charger for now. Pushing the button. It looks like everything zeroed out, charging power, only seven watts. The screen is not changing until I remove the charger plug. And it gives a reading of what you did in this charge session. Charging at five amps success, it's able to do that. If I stop charging from my Tesla app, it does stop it as well. And then I can restart it, I think, without actually having to swipe the card again. Or if you don't wanna use the card, you just hold it here for 15 seconds. That means you no longer need the card and it'll start charging once you plug it in. So this is useful if you're just using it in your garage like myself and you don't wanna mess with the card. App control is done through the Tuya Smart app. 
when I started it already has a device ready to be added. So I just click add. I have my Wi-Fi information already entered. So just click next. Then we wait for it to add. Oh, it's done adding. Okay, click done. And now we have app access to the charger. Right now it's real time charge. So whenever you plug it in, it's gonna charge it up to full. Or if your car has a limit to a certain percentage, it will stop there. Charging mode over here, you can change to delayed charging and you can delay a certain number of hours. It seems like it's in increments of one hour at a time rather than a scheduled charging. So the delay here is a little bit less granular, 240.4 volts, 48 amps. This is the highest it will go, the highest my car will allow me to charge at 11.534 kilowatts. I can click it to turn off the power and let me unplug it, plug it back in again. And it actually doesn't need me to swipe right because I disabled the RFID card. There's a record of how much you charge, how much energy you put in your car. There's also settings where you can export your charge record and also change the maximum charge current. I'm gonna open up the breakers and turn off the power completely. This simulates me turning this thing off completely. I wanna turn it back on and be able to charge without messing with the Wi-Fi, without messing with any kind of setting. So it should be ready just by itself like this, plugging it in. Yep, it starts charging without any interference on my part, ramping up to 48 amps. It's kind of convenient to have this screen here because then you don't have to pull up your app on your phone. I have an amp meter here clamped to one of the voltage lines. Turning on the breaker, we should be able to see how much current it draws. The screen is on, every once in a while it draws 40 milliamps. That's actually pretty good. Just as a sanity check, I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna start charging 48.2 amps on the Andaman and 48.33 amps on this amp meter. So when I stop the charge, it really is not drawing all that much current when it's just on standby mode. The standby power is actually much better than I expected. I can feel that it's slightly warm over here, so it will consume a little bit of energy. Overall, everything works as expected. The startup behavior is very good. The gauge of the cable is also very good in order to minimize power loss. These EV chargers are very commoditized. They all have similar features tiny, tiny differences between them. So the only thing that's left is make sure it has the features that you want and also it looks the way that you want it to. If you guys are interested in getting one of these, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.